What does it really take to grow a business to a million a year in sales? It seems like the milestone that everyone covets. And you would think that this would be really hard to do, right? But there are more businesses than you would think. Just in the United States alone, there are 35,000 non-employer businesses who make over a million a year in net income. That means people with zero employees. And if you count all the businesses that actually have employees as well, as well then there are millions of businesses out there that make over a million dollars a year. So if you're wondering, like, is it possible to make a million dollars a year? The answer is absolutely, and you can go find proof. This is actually one of the best things you can do for yourself is go show yourself proof. Because when I hear the number, oh, 35,000 people are making a million a year with no employees, I'm like, well, I can be as good as 35,000 other people. It's not like it's a handful of people out there. But again, when you count people with employees, people with a team, it's millions of businesses. So it's fair to assume that if other people can do it, you can do it too. And today we're going to talk about the four steps to scale to a million a year. Now, I didn't make these up. I put these into practice and I've seen them work over and over again. So we're going to walk through that process all the way starting from zero, scaling to a million. Now we're really going to focus on that scale part. So we'll run through what do you need to put in place to get the foundations? And then what are we going to do to scale and go from there? So let's jump into it. So just so you know, if you've never met me before, so you know that I know what I'm talking about, uh, I did get the ClickFunnels award. This thing is just a really good piece of proof because ClickFunnels audits your accounts. You actually have to show them inside your Stripe accounts, your PayPal accounts, and they give this reward out for making over a million a year in sales in one funnel. Uh, and I think that they used to maybe didn't audit your accounts and so back in the day maybe people could make things up but they caught on to that and so now they actually go in and check. So anybody who has one of these you know they at least figured something out right and I like to just show this because if you're just a stranger on the internet you've never met me, me um, I can just be making all this stuff up so I just want to show you that I've done it. And then uh, I've done it for other people too so I think three years in a row I did it for three different businesses. So Tom says uh, Christian is the person that helped me build out my business. So far in October, I've collected 120,000 in fees and we started the business in December. So that's zero to 120,000 a month in 10 months using this process. So I just wanna make the point, this is a proven process to scale a business to a million dollars. It's not magic, okay? It's not some like thing that is just a, a freak accident. There's actually a process behind this and it works if you put it into practice. This is the thing is like business is pretty well figured out. It's people that aren't. Business isn't that complicated. People are complicated, particularly ourselves, seeing ourselves clearly and getting out of our own way to get what we want in life. So before you learn to sprint, before you make the million a year, you have to learn to crawl. So how do we predictably, predictably being the key word, go from zero to $10,000 in sales? If we've never been in business before, this is not that hard Millions and millions of people have done it. So if you haven't done it, that's cool. But just know that you it's well within your capabilities. If you're here today, you have access to the internet and a computer, and you're watching this video, you can do this. So let's talk about how to do it and why most people get confused with this. Going from zero to 10,000 in sales is all about skill development and work habits. Let me show you what I mean. If you haven't made $10,000 yet or $1,000, you need to learn and practice skills. This is the part that most people skip and consistently focus on revenue generating activities every day for six to 12 months. And I say that because some people put them into practice for like one day and then uh, they quit. And so your outlook should be at least six to 12 months ahead, okay? Now, what do I mean when I say skills? This could be the things you typically see when we talk about online businesses like copywriting, media buying, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, but when I say skills, I really mean any skill that is useful. Teaching music, teaching fitness, uh, software engineer, video editing, plumbing, or being an electrician, financial engineering. These are skills. Skills are tools that you can use to solve problems for people. Because money is a byproduct of solving problems for people. You can't go out there and make money. You can go out there and solve problems for people in exchange for money. It's a byproduct. And the way that you solve problems is initially is having these really specialized skills initially. We'll get to 
why I say that a little bit later. So this is why trade schools work so well, right? The ROI on trade schools is, is amazing. You go, you get a specialized skill, you get out, you always find a job, and you make money, okay? This is why I believe the online education is the best possible investment you can make because it gives you tools that no one can ever take away from you with an infinite lifelong ROI, okay? Once you learn these skills, you get to use them for the rest of your life. So if you take a two-month course, 30 years from now, you might still be using skills that you learned in that course. So it just blows my mind how skeptical people are of online education. It has the highest ROI of almost any education. And I'm a huge fan of traditional education as well. It's just the ROIs, if we look at it from an investment perspective of time and money, the ROI is not that great, right? It takes four to 10 years, depending on if you're getting undergraduate or master, and it's really, really expensive. So online education comparatively is, is really great because it's focused on practical skills, it's quick, and the ROI is almost instant. So skills, as uh, Make It Rain Obama can teach us, skills plus revenue generating activities equals cash money. Now what are revenue generating activities? These are things like reaching out to your market to learn more about them, these are your potential customers, messaging your market directly to make an offer, talking to your market directly, sales or strategy calls, speaking to groups or publishing to groups. Revenue generating activities, they're activities that generate revenue. That's what we want to focus on at the beginning. At this stage, this is pretty much anything that makes an offer to a customer. An offer is just saying, I will do this for you if you give me money. That's an offer. You have to make offers to get paid in business. Now, what's not an RGA? Because people get really confused about this. I see it over and over again, even when you tell them to focus on RGAs. They'll do things like redesign their website when they've never made a dollar online, create business cards, watch YouTube videos, post on Instagram, and somehow think that that's being in business. No. Watching reruns of The Office, I do this all the time because I love The Office, but it's not going to make me money, and I know what I'm doing, and I'm not going to make any money doing that. Complaining. The complaining has a negative ROI. It's the worst thing you could possibly do. It might make you feel better. It's not going to help you hit your goals. And uh, being too scared to take action, but convincing yourself it's for a good reason, like you're not ready or you need to learn more, whatever it is. If you're not taking action, you're not performing revenue generating activities. So the only way to make money is to get in front of people who can hand it over because money does not grow on trees. It comes from people. It just moves around the economy. It's like water. It's just flowing downhill. It's going where momentum is taking it. So what we want is to figure out how to get that money to flow from other people to us, right? And it's not a lose-lose game. Like, they're not losing that money. They're getting value in return, and they'll make more money at their job or whatever. So we want to make sure we're providing more value than the money that we're taking from them. That's what will make happy customers. But here's the deal. Most people will do almost anything to avoid asking people for money. Does this sound familiar? I know. I used to be really uncomfortable asking people for money. It just felt weird. I wasn't used to it. Nobody ever taught me how to do that. And, you know, when you have a job, you just get a check from the accounting department or the human resources department every month. And it's almost like it comes from this nameless, faceless being, the, the corporation. But when you're in business for yourself, you actually have to take money from people. Either way, it's coming from people. You just don't see the people in the other instance. So if you struggle internally with taking money from people, uh, check out Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. I think this book will really help you out. But anyways, most people will never do revenue generating activities and they'll stay broke forever. They'll never make their first sale and they'll blame it on anything under the sun, you know. But when you actually perform these activities, stuff like this happens. Ben says, happy Friday, everyone. Just close another one at $1,500 and officially make more than I would at a normal nine to five. Now, I think at this point, Ben is is maybe like a month or two into working online. So most people who fail at this stage, this is really attainable for anyone who builds skills and performs revenue generating activities. Most people who fail at the stage are like wannabe rock stars who never practice the guitar or play local gigs and then they wonder why they can't land stadium shows. So it's these people saying, this doesn't work, this is a scam. And you're like, dude, have you even practiced the guitar? Like, you're not going to make it to the stadium if you don't practice your guitar every day. So you have to learn those skills. You have to build the foundations. Once you get to that point, once you make your first 10,000, the game is going to change a little bit. Okay, the game changes at every stage. And this is a game. Keep that in mind. There, it is a game with rules. And if you know how to play it, 
you can win the game. $10,000 to $100,000, this is basically like sustaining and repeating what you did in stage one. So you see Ben here, he's making more than at a normal job, so he's right on track to hit six figures, but what's he got to do? He has to repeat that initial success, right? So sustain and repeat. This is a different skill set. We have to keep those revenue generating activities up. We have to keep those work habits up. But now we have to focus on product development. You might have heard this term if you've ever worked like in tech or in software, but it applies to all businesses, no matter what business you have. You might have a landscape business, you might have a software business or an ad agency. Any business we look at, we have to worry about product development if we want to grow. All this really means is we focus on one type of person with one problem and we create a consistent solution to that problem that's delivered the same way every time. So remember I said making money is just solving problems for people. And what we want to do is solve the problem for the same type of person over and over again. Remember, repeat and sustain. So if we do Facebook ads for a living, we're going to need to choose a niche at this point. If you do Facebook ads for chiropractors, then we need to refine our product. We want to nail down a killer funnel to consistently bring results. So create a consistent solution to the problem that's delivered the same way every time. Now this works in any business, remember. If you do graphic design, pick a niche. If you do graphic design for Pilates studios, then you need to nail down a killer design package that makes the client happy. Uh, again, works for any business. If you're like a landscaper, you want to pick a niche. Maybe you work with certain neighborhoods in your town and you provide a high-end service, okay? And then you offer the same package to every client. Create a consistent way to deliver that product. So product development, though, it's not something you do ahead of time. Product development will happen naturally if you work with enough clients. So if you're wondering, how do I do this, Christian? My best advice for you would be go work with 10 to 20 people in your market. It'll happen automatically, okay? All you have to do is keep listening to your clients and help them solve problems. Keep solving problems. Your product is going to evolve to more efficiently solve those problems. It's not really something you have to like plan out ahead of time. The best thing you can do is jump in and just go for it. So for the Rockstar example, this is honing their craft, defining their sound, and writing new songs as a result of playing so many shows. Again, this will happen naturally for the Rockstar, somebody who goes out there and they play shows every night. Their songs are going to get better. They're going to get better at writing. Their sound is going to uh, take on unique characteristics. Same goes for business, okay? It'll happen naturally if you're out there practicing, if you're out there playing and not sitting at home and trying to like just think this stuff up on your own. So you must experiment and not give up when you don't nail it on try one. If you go out there, you work with a client and the very first time you don't get great results and you give up, that's really silly. It's like a rock star going out. They play one show, they have a terrible set and they say, oh, this stuff does not work. I give up. People have the weirdest relationship with money where if you start a new instrument, you understand that you have to play the instrument for years to get good at it. If you start a new sport, you understand you have to do that sport for years to get good at it. Yet, some people will try and start a new business. It doesn't work week one, and then they'll give up. It's just the craziest thing. So money is the same as any other area in life. It's the same as mastery in the arts, um, in fitness, in anything else. So the key here is that we want to use just-in-time experimentation, okay? We want to solve problems only as they arise. Just-in-time problem-solving, okay? Don't be a problem fortune teller. I've worked with problem fortune tellers before, and this is what they'll do. They'll approach a task in their business, and all of a sudden they have a magic crystal ball and it's telling them problems that will happen days or weeks or months from now and they say, oh, well, I can't take the next step until I solve this problem. And I say, how do you know that's a problem? Are you experiencing that? And it's basically like, no, my crystal ball is telling me that. So this is just resistance. It's just a way to avoid doing things that are uncomfortable, okay? It's a way to avoid doing those RGAs, as I said, because most people are so uncomfortable with them. Uh, so they pretend they have a crystal ball that will tell them all the problems that will arise. Don't worry about problems. Don't try and figure it out ahead of time, okay? Just be a just-in-time problem solver. So a good product combined with good work habits focused on revenue-generating activities will get you to $100,000 a year. Are you following me here? Solve problems for people. Do it consistently over and over again. There's your hundred grand a year. It's not that hard. It's very simple. I don't mean that it doesn't take hard work. I just mean... The determination is 
Are you doing the thing? Do the thing, you shall have the power. Works really well. So I want to remind you, you have to actually stick with something for a year to make $100,000 a year. It's in the name, $100,000 a year, stick with something for a year, okay? The biggest determinant of your success is are you still doing the thing a year from now? That's the biggest thing. That's the best thing you could do for yourself. Now, some people try and skip ahead. They try and skip all the stuff because they want to scale immediately. And this was a big trend in the tech industry, and you might have heard that a new trend caught on that was do things that don't scale. And that's because people kept trying to skip the foundations that we just talked about and go straight to the scale. That's not going to work for you. It's not. So if you see what people are doing at a million dollars a year and you're at zero dollars and you try and do the same things they do, that's not going to work for you. So don't skip ahead. So if you haven't made any money online ever, go join an educational program to learn skills. That's why they exist. That's why online courses exist. They don't exist to scam you out of your money. They don't exist to make the course creators rich. They exist to teach you skills and get a predictable result for you. If they don't do that, they don't last more than a week. It's not easy. People think it's so easy to go out there and just sell these courses online. Go try it. It's very, very difficult. The only way that it works is if you can consistently produce a result for your students, okay? So go join a course to learn skills that you're naturally curious about and apply yourself for two years. Stop looking for a shortcut to skill development. I know I'm pretty stern on this stuff. It's because I know this is what's gonna get you results and I want you to get results. So the biggest reason people don't get what they want when they're starting out is they focus on opportunities instead of skill sets, okay? Let's understand this distinction. Things like niche hopping, because they think they're in the wrong niche. Starting one course, giving up a week in and buying another one. Switching business models, month to month. Trying to make money instead of developing skills. Does this sound familiar? I know I did this for years, okay? There's no, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just a natural thing to do, but it's not going to get you the results that you want. So consistently practice your craft and the results will come. In the Rockstar example, stop switching instruments. If you play guitar for a week and you suck at it, it's not because guitar doesn't work. You don't need to switch to the violin, okay? You need to just keep playing the guitar and the results will come. So this will get us to $100,000 a year, no problem. But what got you to $100,000 a year will not get you to $100,000, or $500,000 a month, okay? It just won't. It's a completely different game. So we have to level up. Again, what got you here will not get you there. But again, we have to play the first game first, play the second game second. We can't skip ahead. So at $80,000 a month in revenue, I held every single position in my company. I did every single thing. And I was on an all-out sprint, and I was in Thailand um, working, and my friend who had had a business for about 15 years online, he saw me answering customer emails out of my Gmail every morning. And he was like, dude, what are you doing? You made $80,000 this month, and you don't even have a customer service system set up. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? Like, what does that even mean? And so I just had no idea that these things even existed. I was just doing the same thing I did to get to $10,000 a month, okay? But again, you have to change the game that you're playing. You can't really white knuckle it to $100,000 a month. You can totally just go all in, do everything yourself to $100,000 a year. If you wanna transcend that, you gotta to start to do things differently. You need staff and systems. Uh, this is especially true because you can go really hard on your own for a couple of years, but eventually you'll burn out and you realize that you can't sprint the rest of your life. So you need staff and systems. Uh, also, if you want to scale, you're not going to be able to do it on your own. But these things aren't going to help you until you have those skills, habits, and a product. Okay? So again, like the rock star trying to find a tour manager before learning to play, it's just not going to help you if you don't have this early stuff figured out. All right, let's talk about 100,000 to a million. This is the scaling part, right? This is the part that gets everybody really excited. Is scaling to a million. This is all about distribution. This is kind of cool because if you're like really burnt out in your business, you're making six figures a year, you almost get to like start a whole new job at this point, okay? So we kind of get out of some of the lower level stuff we've been doing and we start focusing on distribution. This is a whole different game. So four steps to scale to a million dollars from 100,000. So I'm assuming you've already got the six figure thing figured out based on what we talked about. Now we're gonna to scale to a million. We're gonna 10X the company. Four steps, pretty simple. It's actually pretty simple to scale 
to a million once you have the first hundred thousand figured out I would say it's easier than figuring out the first hundred thousand um, because again distribution can happen faster than skill development and that's a, again different game you're playing so four steps to scale to a million number one unequivocal proof of concept we'll talk about what that means Number two, automated lead generation. Number three, systemized sales. And number four, standardized delivery. These four things will get you to the million. So step one. Again, this depends on what business you're in, how, many, how much proof you need. But I have step one, get five to 10 or more results-based testimonials. The more, the better. Now the keyword here is results-based, okay? Let me show you what I mean. You know how skincare pictures have a before and after? Some of the ads are just ridiculous like this. Like obviously a skincare product can't do that. It somehow this sh still shows up in the ads. But the point here is this is a before and after. It shows what the person, what their life is like before they work with you and what it's like after. So should your product or service. I don't care what product or service you have. You should have a clear before and after. So. Catherine says, I knocked it out of the park to my first client. They have so many leads, they asked me if I could tone it down so they could catch up. LOL, so stoked. So for Catherine's client, her client has a very clear before and after. Before they didn't have leads, now they have too many to keep up with. And Catherine has a client of mine, she has a very clear before and after. Before she didn't have clients that she's knocking out of the park with, afterwards she does. So here's the deal. Your client is hiring you to get the after result. When you buy skincare product, you are hiring that product to get you the space on the right. Um, let's look at another example. Why do we hire lawnmowers? Let's say you go to Home Depot on Saturday and you just love lawnmowers and you go in there and you're gonna buy yourself a new lawnmower and you pick out the coolest one and you bring it home and you go to cut the grass with it. If it doesn't make the grass shorter, it didn't do what you hired it to do. If it cuts the grass and the grass looks great, it's done what it was hired to do, okay? So it doesn't matter like how cool the lawnmower looks, doesn't matter like how great it is, how easily it rolls. If it doesn't cut that grass, it's most likely not doing what it was hired to do, okay? Some companies have great customer service and they're just very professional, but they just don't get the job done. It's very frustrating. So your outcome, should be just as clear. The most important part about your business is the outcome that you provide, okay? It's none of the other things. It's not how you get that outcome. It's not how many hours you work. It's not the level of service. These things can help you compete in a competitive market. They can help set you apart from the competition, but the best thing to focus on is just that clear before and after. So Rachel says, whoop whoop, no joke, my second day in the program, just got my first paying client. Uh, if you want that before and after, digitalnomad.com slash yes. Very clear before and after, right? For Rachel, she has a very clear before and after. The point is that proof is needed for your distribution strategy to work. There's no point in trying to scale if you don't have proof. It's going to be a waste of money because scaling does cost money. Distribution costs money. And if you don't have proof and you can't get your customer result, it's going to be a waste. So first thing we do, we just gather up testimonials from our happy clients with a clear before and after, okay? Step two, master mass lead generation on one channel. You don't need to be on every single channel to scale to a million dollars. You don't need to be on Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and YouTube and TikTok. And if you try and do all those things, you're gonna do them all very poorly. So you wanna do one thing really well. Now that one thing can be anything you want. Uh, we wanna find out where our customers are already hanging out. Then we wanna get in front of them on a mass scale. So could be public speaking. If we can go to an event with 10,000 of our customers there and just get on that stage, we're going to get massive results, right? That's pretty obvious, isn't it? So we're going to do the same thing online. But again, focus on one channel. Don't try and be everywhere. That's when we scale to 10 million, we want to master all the channels. Scaling to 1 million, we're going to master one channel. So pick the one that you like. Pick the one where you can find your customers. Get really, 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 really good at it. So it could be public speaking. could be automated cold email systems. You could literally hire someone to go door to door. You know how like roofers will hire people to go door to door and knock on the door and say, hey, I saw the storm damage your roof. Would you like a new roof? Your insurance company will most likely cover it. This, they clean up doing this. This is how easy it is. This is how simple business is. That's what I mean. Like if you want to find new clients, find out where those clients are, 
The ones who have the problem you can solve. So roofers just look at that roof, see which ones are damaged from the storm. They knock on the door. They go directly to the customer. That's those RGAs we talked about. Uh, so you can literally hire someone to go door to door if that works for your company, depending on what it is. You can use Facebook ads. You can use YouTube ads. Just get really good at one of these. So at this level, we can't keep reaching out one-to-one -one unless we work with very high-value clients. So if you work with like Fortune 1000 clients, these corporations that can pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, you might still do one-to-one -one work. But I'm talking about something that's a little lower price, so thousands of dollars or less. We're going to want to go mass on our strategy. So we're going to change from one-to-one -to, -one to one too many on our lead generation. And here's why we need to do this. Your income is a function of leads times conversion. What does that mean? A lead is just somebody who has a problem that you can solve, who raises their hand and say, yes, I'm interested in a solution. So just like those homeowners, we knock on their door, they have a broken roof, and they say, oh yeah, I actually would like a new roof. That's a lead right there. So leads times conversion. Any business typically converts one to 5% of leads. It's just hard to convert any higher than that. That would mean you need to talk to between 20 and 100 people to get one new customer, okay? But here's the deal, 5% of zero is still zero. So it doesn't matter how many, how great our conversions are if we can't generate new leads, like we're out of luck. So we've got to generate leads. Let me show you an example. Let's say every new client is worth $24,000 a year to you. Let's say you sign on a client, they pay you $2,000 a month. But let's say your average client only stays for six months. That means they'll pay you $12,000 over the year. So a million dollars divided by 12,000 is 83.33 clients. 83 divided by 1%, so let's say we convert 1% of leads, is 8,333 leads. And that's how easy it is to make a million dollars. Is, um, I should probably use the word simple instead of easy, because I'm not saying that's easy, but I'm saying it's simple. Like Break down how many leads you need, figure out how many leads you convert, and then generate that many leads, okay? So if we know we convert 1% of leads, each conversion is worth $12,000, and now we know we need to generate 8,333 leads to make a million dollars a year. Now, if that seems like a lot, 8,333 leads, it's really not. I do about 15,000 leads a month right now, so it's totally doable. If you want to learn more about how to generate leads, I have a video about how to do that on the YouTube channel for free. So go check that out. We'll link to it below this video. Now, leads should be coming in whether you are awake, asleep, at work, or on vacation. This is how you know you're doing it right. Ask yourself this question. Did you have new leads when you woke up today? If yes, then you can go into the next step. If not, hire a marketer or learn lead generation. Again, check out that video because you need to have leads when you wake up in the morning. Once we figured that out, step three to scaling to a million a year is to hire a salesperson. Now, in my company, we use commission-only salespeople and we pay them at the end of the month. What does this mean? It means they don't get paid unless we get paid first. What are the implications of that? It means everybody can have a salesperson. There's no reason that you can't afford a salesperson. It just doesn't make sense. So there's no excuse not to have a salesperson if you don't like sales. But there is a catch, okay? Uh, you must have leads coming in for those salespeople to talk to, and you have to have proof of concept and be able to deliver value, okay? If you have those things, this is a win-win-win relationship. It's a win for me because I make more sales. It's a win for the salespeople because they get paid commission, and they have a pretty sweet gig. If you ask me, I have a flexible schedule. They have leads that are just fed to them. And all I got to do is get on the phone and close those leads. And it's a win for the customer because they get a higher level of service and they get someone to answer all the questions. It's a win, win, win. That's what's so cool about business is when you get to the scale, value is being provided to everybody involved. So the people that work in the business, they're making a living. This is their job. People that own the business, they're making a profit. Hopefully the customers, they're getting their problem solved. The vendors are making money. Salespeople are making money. A business is just an organization that provides value to everyone who touches it. That's the only way to survive as a business. Everybody should be winning. It should be win, 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 win. The only people that should be losing are your competitors if you're doing it right. Now, it's not your salesperson's job to figure out product development or generate leads, okay? A salesperson is not going to save your business. If you can't make sales without a salesperson, 
don't go get a salesperson. Figure out how to make sales and deliver value first, okay? They're not going to save you. But if you can already make sales and deliver value, they can increase sales, okay? So they are an amplifier, just like online advertising. So just like hiring a promoter won't save the rock star if they suck, hiring a salesperson won't save you if you haven't figured out the foundations, okay? But here's the deal. Sales is the highest value activity in terms of like the effort and reward ratio. If you're already driving leads and they're getting so close to point of purchase and you can have somebody just get on the phone and tip them over the line, that's very little effort involved on your part and it's a very high reward. So there are things in business like product development that takes a lot longer, it takes a lot more effort and it can have a massive payoff, but it's just a bigger equation. It's gonna take more time, there are more unknowns. Sales is really like, okay, somebody near the finish line, just tap them over and the payoff is huge, okay? And again, commission only, you got nothing to lose, nothing. But it's really important that you automate sales in your business if you're gonna to scale to a million dollars. If every lead that comes in, if you have to get on the phone with them, yourself one you're gonna burn out two you're not gonna be able to do it okay you need to have somebody else doing that stuff so you can focus on growing the business this is a lesson that we'll arrive at at the end of this is that you have to shift your focus to figuring out how to grow the business instead of running the business day to day you hear this a million times work on your business instead of in it step four standardized delivery what does this mean it means two times the clients cannot equal two times the work for you you must take a hit to profits to put systems in place okay a lot of people, two times the clients is two times the work, but they don't want to hire someone because they want to make all the profits. That's not a good way to scale. If you are online, this might mean switching to group coaching or a course if you do service delivery right now, or it means putting staff in place to fulfill the order. Let me show you what I mean. If making a new sale stresses you out, you're doing this wrong. I remember this used to happen to me. Is like I would have like five or six clients. I would get on the phone on Friday afternoon. I would close a new client, seventh client. Uh, this is before I learned how to streamline things. And I would close the client and I'll hang up and it's like, there goes my weekend, you know, because now I got to fulfill all this work. So this is what making sales should feel like. Look at all that money. Doesn't that feel good? Just jumping in that money pool. Making sales should feel good. When a sale comes in, you should feel it in your body. It should feel good. If it feels bad, you need to implement this process, okay? If you deliver a service, train someone to deliver it. It's your job as a business owner to build the system. The system is what delivers value, okay? You're not building a job for yourself. So if you own a CrossFit gym, hire coaches. If you own an ad agency, hire an ads manager to run the ads for you, okay? If you deliver a product, train someone to help iterate the product. For example, if you sell software, hire a user experience expert to make the product better. Improvement. Product improvement should be built into your culture. It should happen with or without you. You need to systemize improvement, okay? And here's the deal that a lot of people don't understand. Product and service development never really ends. These are not tasks to complete. They are habits of a business. So some people think like, okay, step one, figure out the funnel. Step two, grow the business. But step one happens every day. Every single day, you're just improving your product. The better product you can deliver, the easier it will be to grow your business, okay? Client results are, are everything. But what it comes down to is offloading all this stuff so that you can free yourself up to steer the ship, okay? You must become the captain of the business. Now, if you looked at a cruise ship, a luxury cruise ship, on a daily basis, the captain does not swab the deck, he doesn't serve the passenger's lunch, he doesn't raise the sails, he doesn't load supplies, he doesn't clean the bathroom. And you might think, oh, like, oh, he'd be a really good guy if he did that. No, he wouldn't because he has much more important things to do. If the captain had to do all of this, they would inevitably neglect the most important duty of all, steering the ship and making sure it doesn't sink. How stupid would they feel if they crashed the ship because they were trying to chip in and do everything? They're trying to clean the bathrooms. All, I know old maritime law used to be that the captain goes down with the ship, they're the last one off. I don't know if it's still like that. It probably is. But you don't want to crash the ship, okay? If if you have to delegate cleaning the bathroom so that you can make sure the ship makes it to the destination, it's in everybody's best interest. Stop thinking you have to do everything. So it's your job to steer the ship now, okay? We need to automate these things so you can transition from do-it-yourself to CEO. This is when you finally own a business. When you wake up in the morning, 
and you see how much money you made when you make new sales and it feels good and everyone involved is getting value from it, okay? The system does the work. You build the system. It keeps paying off. The work you put in today will keep paying off tomorrow and next week and next month and next year and hopefully five years from now. It is more work up front for a longer payoff, okay? You have to put in the hard work now to get the payoff later. The CEO's job is to figure out what should be done and who is going to do it. So they'll tell somebody to swab the deck. They will not swab the deck themselves. They don't figure out how to do the things and they don't do it themselves. Okay, so that's four steps to scale to a million dollars a year. Get five to ten results-based testimonials with the before and after or more. We have hundreds for WFA. Hundreds is ideal, the, the more mass market you want to go. But a lot of markets, you really only need five to ten. It really depends on what you're selling. Um, automate mass lead generation. That means you should have leads coming in 24-7, 365 without you having to manually do it all. Hire a sales rep to close sales. So those sales should be closed without you being involved. You should get payments on your phone and be like, oh, wow, look, I just got paid. I, how did that happen? That's how it should feel because you're not the one closing every single sale, okay? Now, again, if you try to do this between zero and $100,000, you're making a mistake. You should be on the phone. You should know exactly where that sale came from. But once you go beyond that, you're going to play a different game, remember? And then number four is standardize and systemize delivery. That means five times the sales is not five times the work for you. So this means creating products or standardizing service delivery by hiring people to deliver the service. And then if the system works, if you put in inputs and you get enough back out, you get more than you put in back out, just keep putting in more leads and you will get to a million dollars. Again, a really simple process. I'm not saying it's easy. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes dedication. It takes a real dedication to trying to figure out how to uniquely solve your customers' problems in a way that they really appreciate. And if you can do that, then you just put these systems in place around it and do it over and over and over again. So it's really about, it's about repetition and consistently delivering that result. And remember, you want everybody who touches the organization to get value out of the activities. So be the rock star. Build those skills first, then practice in front of real people. This is like honing your skills and going out and working with clients, figuring out your product. You're going to refine your sound and your songs by working with clients, start playing bigger shows, build a fan base, play the stadium shows, sell a million records, and then become rich and famous. So again, it's not step one, decide to go into business. Step two, become rich and famous. Okay, that's not. It's a process. You have to follow it in order. So what now? Well, if you want to join our high-level mastermind to scale from six to seven figures, I'll show you all my systems step by step. And the only thing is this is only for people who are already at six figures and they're dedicated to serving their customers and solving problems and they're ready to hustle. So you can apply for that at digitalnomad.com slash mastermind. And we'll cover hiring, culture, planning, scaling, how to expand a mass market, different ad platforms, and much more to take you to seven figures in sales in the next 12 months. It's going to be awesome. Now, if you're not there yet and you don't have the foundations in place and you want to get your first sale or your first six figures, check out digitalnomad.com. We have some more free trainings for you there as well as paid programs if you're ready to join a community of people who are all going after this together. And then subscribe for the algorithm if you want to see more. YouTube really likes it if you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, all that does is that's going to give us what we need to keep making videos. And then, of course, put in the comments, what did you think of this video? What did you learn? What questions do you have? What do you want to see next? And I'll see you on the next one. 218587 dollars that's how much my phone is showing right now because that's how much I made in my business in the last 30 days using three very specific skills. My name is Christian Martin. I'm here in Bali, Indonesia, and I was just reading an article about how demand for digital marketing skills outstrips supply. Now, if you've taken Economics 101, you know that when demand exceeds supply, price goes up. That's right, just like when Tickle Me Elmo ran out of stock in 1996 and people went crazy for it, 
or when Bitcoin went nuts and even my plumber was buying crypto, the price rose and rose. Right now, local businesses like dentists, chiropractors, and gyms are going crazy for people with the right skills. Yes, paying clients are going crazy for these skills. Do you want to get paid to help local businesses get new customers through Facebook ads and funnels? I'm talking about starting a work from anywhere, mad men style ad agency. These are the skills that I learned to get paying clients while traveling around the world, doing things like skydiving in the Cascades, riding four wheelers in Morocco, backflipping into a Mexican cenote, or scuba diving at the Great Barrier Reef. Skill number one is copywriting. This is just a fancy word for writing, also called ad copy. Now, if you've ever scrolled through Facebook, these are the words you see at the top of a sponsored post. Writing copy is fun because it's all about people and psychology. If you're the curious type, you should have no problem with skill number one. Be curious about people and figure out what they want. It's kind of like being an FBI agent and interrogating a suspect. Your job is to get to the bottom of things. Now I'll give you a copywriting hack. Just go to Yelp and copy paste a review for your client's business into your ad. This works almost every time. So for more hacks like this, you want to check out the webinar by clicking through. Skill number two is sales. This is the ability to have a phone call with someone and accurately assess if you can help and then offer your services. This is how you get paid. Now, contrary to what people think, this is not forcing someone to buy from you. Think about your local doctor. When you go into the doctor, does he have to sell you on a prescription? No, he diagnoses your problem and provides a solution. That's what sales is all about. It's about helping your client find a solution to their problem. Skill number three is funnels. Here's where it gets real. Once you have a paying client, now you have to fulfill on your promise and create a funnel for them. Now don't overcomplicate things. See, I built my first agency to $9,000 a month or close to $108,000 a year using one ad and one funnel. That's one image, three lines of text, and a simple three-page website. So if you're an agency or online business owner that's not where you want to be, it's most likely because you are lacking in one of these areas. Now, if you haven't even started in business yet, it's most likely because you don't have these skills. So I put together a free training to show you how to master all three. Because when you have all three of these skills, it's like selling Tickle Me Elmo to middle American families the night before Christmas in 1996. That's how simple it is. Now, did I mention you can do this kind of work from anywhere in the world? Come learn to master the skills you need and start to get real results in your business. Click through to the next page, enter your best email address, and I'll give you my best email scripts just for showing up. These are the same scripts that have gotten new clients like this, this, and this. In fact, 50,000 people have already been through this free training. Just don't wait too long to show up. Just like Bitcoin or Tickle Me Elmo, the key is to ride the wave to the top and take the skills with you when the ride is over. These are the most valuable and timeless skills you could ever learn if you wanna create wealth online and work from anywhere. See you inside. Take the magic back at digitalnomad.com.